In this video, I'll talk about the highest paying entry level IT jobs. And these are jobs with high salaries, often six figures that you can get with no experience. And many of these are jobs that you can do from home as well. And that is because IT as a field offers some of the best work from home opportunities. It is also a field that is rapidly growing with many new job opportunities all the time. And these are all jobs that you can get without a degree and without experience. But let's be real, some of these will be hard to get if you start from zero, but it's not impossible and nothing good comes easy. These jobs are definitely worth it. Let's get into it starting with number 10 on the list, which is the systems engineer. If you have problem solving skills and some business experience, this career is definitely an interesting one for you. And it pays very well too. In fact, with this career, you can earn as much as 110,000 per year, which is twice the average salary of most Americans. It's very helpful if you do have a relevant degree, but the main focus here is going to be on gaining proficiency in system design and analysis, kind of seek different internships, you might try boot camp, you might do some project to get some hands on experience, and there are many different things that you can do, but it's just a combination of all of them together. Now, number nine is going to be software developer. And before anything, I just want to talk a little bit about competition and how this works, because a lot of people are looking to become software developers, and some people are saying that it's kind of a younger person's game. Now, I don't have any personal experience with this, and I cannot say anything about this, but this is just some thoughts that I've read online. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't go for it if you're older, but this job definitely needs you to keep up with the most recent technology day after day. And from what I have seen online, most kind of senior software developers end up being in a management or performing a different role that the company kind of required them to anyway. But the responsibilities of a software developer include designing, coding and testing, and you know, with different software, collaborating with stakeholders and debugging. And if you do want to start a career in software development, you can earn as much as around 130,000 per year. And there are going to be various ways to get into it. The competition is very high, but if you are dedicated, you can of course do it. Now, the next one is going to be the Java developer, but unlike software engineers or UX designers who kind of need a combination of skills to work on something, being a Java developer means that you'll specialize in something while everything else is kind of taken care of, meaning that the thing that you'll focus on is going to be Java. Despite a lot of technological advancements, Java is still a very popular programming language and it's highly in demand, especially in kind of proven businesses that have been around a while. Now, to succeed in this role and earn a six-digit annual salary, you will need to be really good at Java, of course, and you will need to stay up to date and work well with others as well. Number seven is going to be the UX designer. And a UX designer basically makes websites and apps easy and nice to use. And they kind of connect people with the technology that they use. They mix business, art, and tech to create smooth experiences for users. And they beat competitors by focusing on making these products better. And this is also why the career requires you to kind of combine different skills. And there's not just one thing. You're not just building the website. You're actually building it for a very specific purpose. You're making it useful for the people that you're building it for. And if you are a good UX designer, you can actually make a lot of money as well. And the average salary for a UX designer is around 120,000 per year. And the job outlook is looking great as the industry is expected to grow by 23% by the year 2030, which is really good. But again, it's going to be one of the more competitive jobs on the list. And getting into UX is not always going to be as straightforward. You will need a portfolio, you will need some experience doing stuff. You're not just going to send a simple job application after doing a course and then just getting hired. That's not how it's going to work in today's landscape. Now, another IT career that communicates directly to the consumers is going to be being a product designer. And this job requires you to create an entity for mass production. And whether it's a product as small as a ergonomic share or as big as a truck, a product designer makes basically things that people use. They think about what customers want and they make sure that the products work well and that they look good. Remember Elon Musk's foolproof car windows? That's a big oops for a product designer, but I guess it got a lot of attention. Now, as a kind of IT product designer, you would focus on IT products and you can earn up to 130,000 per year or even more. And it's also a highly in-demand career because, well, as many of you guys know, companies are constantly creating and developing products to stay relevant and competitive. Now, number five is going to be cloud engineer. And if you haven't heard about this one before, let me tell you the basics anyway. It is one of the highest paying entry level IT jobs out there or entry level with a salary of over 100,000 per year. A cloud engineer creates, sets up and takes care of cloud system using different platforms and they make sure that everything runs smoothly, secures the data and they fix any issues that come up. They also work with other IT team members to ensure all systems work well together. And their job is to kind of keep the company's use of cloud services efficient, safe and reliable. Now, you may realize that it's a little bit similar to the cloud architect, which we'll talk more about later. But a cloud engineer is more about building the actual structures and a cloud architect is more about designing and implementing cloud solutions. 
Number four is going to be the IT product manager. And think of yourself kind of as a captain of a ship within a big company. Your job is to steer that ship towards success, just like an entrepreneur would with their own business. Let's take Amazon, for example. They're like a huge city with lots of neighborhoods. And sometimes they want to start up a new shop or they want to, you know, introduce some new service in the neighborhood. And that's where you come in. They hire product managers to be like the CEO of those mini shops or the mini services, which are products. You're the one with a vision and you're the one who convinces others that your idea is going to be a hit and be good for the company. And you work closely with teams of designers, engineers and different marketers to bring that vision to life. Now, it's definitely not always smooth sailing, but when your idea actually takes off, it's like watching your own little business grow within a giant ecosystem. And product managers are paid well because they hold a key role in driving a company's product strategy and success. And you're actually responsible for improving the company significantly. You're taking your own initiatives and you're doing a lot of work for that reason that can be paid well as well. And with this job, you can earn as much as 150 or over 200K per year, depending on the company that you work for and the role that you play. Now, number three is going to be the software engineer. Now, we talked about software developers before, but now we're introducing another aspect, which is the software engineer. And these guys are essential because they basically bring technology to life. They're kind of like the architects who design and build the digital world that we live in. Without them, our phones wouldn't work, websites would just crash, and apps would freeze. And when it comes to automation, yes, it is going to be impacted, but we don't know exactly how. And the skills are still in very high demand. And for those with kind of an entry level situation, it's not going to be easy for sure. Sure, there is a lot of competition, but the salaries are very high. And if you are able to compete with kind of the top programmers, you will actually end up making a lot of money. Number two is going to be the data scientist. And a data scientist basically sifts through massive amounts of information to uncover valuable insights and patterns that make businesses make smarter decisions. They're the ones behind the personalized recommendations on Netflix or the algorithms that predict what you'll buy next month. They basically combine skills in statistics, math and programming, and they work with data to find answers to complex questions and improve businesses. Now, exactly what you'll do will depend a lot on the company. The data scientist is still a pretty general role. And technically, this job is for people who want to kind of solve puzzles, want to be at the forefront of innovation or are naturally curious. For the salary, this job kind of pays between 97 to 230,000 a year, and it's a huge range. But I would say that, yes, there are going to be kind of entry level jobs in data science, but most data scientist roles don't really allow you to just start with an entry level situation. You will usually have to get some other job and get some experience, especially if you don't have a degree or you don't have some kind of relevant experience. One good thing is going to be the job outlook for this one, which is actually a growth by 35% by 2032. So even though the competition is pretty fierce, there are going to be more jobs available in the future. And that's at least a good sign. Now, the next one is going to be the cloud architect. And we already talked about cloud a little bit, but cloud architects are the architects of the digital world, kind of designing and building cloud based solutions for businesses to thrive. And they create plans for how data and applications will flow across different cloud services, ensuring that everything runs smoothly smoothly and securely. It's their job to choose the right tools and services from providers like AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud, and then make sure that they all work good together. But before you say that this doesn't seem like an entry level job, yes, it's not 100% entry level. There are going to be jobs in cloud that are more senior or more entry level and cloud architect depends on what you're going to be doing. But the most important thing is not necessarily that the jobs are entry level, it's rather that you are ready for the job. And in this video somewhere on the screen, I will cover courses to help you actually prepare for these jobs with certifications and certificates that you can get to make sure that you're job ready. Check it out somewhere on the screen. It got a lot of use and I think it's going to be very helpful.